Welcome everyone to chapter three, where we're going to begin our discussion on bioenergetics. Basically with this chapter, we're going to discuss how the body creates ATP in the processes and the different fuel sources that are involved with these reactions. In this video, which is known as part one, we're going to discuss the key cell structures, redox reactions, and the theory behind enzymes. So first off, I'd like to define some key terms. The first is metabolism. This is defined as the sum of all the chemical reactions that occur in the body. And ideally, we have two different types of reactions. The first is what we call anabolic reactions. And these synthesize molecules or build up. The second is what we call catabolic reactions. And these do the opposite. These break down molecules. And so basically we can quantify all the chemical reactions in the body, which again is our metabolism, to either be an anabolic reaction where they build something up or a catabolic reaction where it breaks something down. The next definition is bioenergetics. And bioenergetics is the process of breaking foodstuffs into usable energy for work. And, this, and with this definition of bioenergetics, this is what we're going to get into with the rest of Chapter 3, especially when we're talking about how the body creates ATP through its different energy pathways. Interestingly enough, we can quantify the percentage of how our body breaks down our metabolism. And if you look at this pie chart right here, 60% oh, of our metabolism is devoted to resting metabolism. And so this is the calories that you burn at rest. The second part of the pie is here in red is the amount that you burn during physical activity. Or we could just say during exercise. And so when we talk about training programs and trying to increase your metabolism rate, this is the component that your athlete or you as a coach are trying to affect. And then finally, this last component here in green is what we call the thermal effect. This is the amount of calories that are given off during heat. And so hopefully this helps kind of quantify what our metabolism rates look like in a normal human being. Now, when we start talking about the energy production component of metabolism, we have to look at the, some of the key structures within the cell. And in this picture here, we have a photo of a gen, what a generalized cell structure looks like. I'm not going to go over every single element of the cell structure, but there's three key areas I want to point out. The first is the cell membrane, which is a semi-permeable membrane that allows nutrients to flow in and out. The second portion is the nucleus, and this is the center of the cell which contains all of our genetic material, proteins are derived from, and so forth. And finally is the mitochondria, and this is probably the most important element that we're going to talk about in this class. And in short, the mitochondria are typically known as the energy production center for any cell. With this information, we can start relating it to the structure of skeletal muscle cells. And the reason we talk about this is when we talk about exercise, we have to talk about skeletal muscle. And so we'll get into more of the specifics of the structure with skeletal muscle in chapter 10. But let's talk about some of the key components. So here what we have is a photo of skeletal muscle. And first off, this upper sheath, what we call the sarcolemma, 
which is the plasma membrane for the skeletal muscle. Next are the nuclei, which you find here on the surface of the myofibrils. And we'll denote, we'll talk about that more in chapter 10 on why they're located here. But more importantly, I want to point out the location of the mitochondria of the skeletal muscle. And you have two different types of mito mitochondria in skeletal muscle. The first is you have the subsarcolemma mitochondria. And secondly, you have what's called the inner myofibril mitochondria. And the location of these two different types of mitochondria are highly important. The, su the subsarcolemmal mitochondria, they produce ATP for typical cell functions. And the intermyofibril mitochondria produce ATP for muscular contractions. And knowing the location of these two different types of mitochondria will help with understanding the entire process of ATP production pathways. Now, when we look at different types of reactions within the cell, whether it's in the cytoplasm, nucleus, or in the mitochondria, there are two different types of cellular reactions that can be classified. The first is what we call an exothermic reaction. And this is a type of reaction that releases energy. And the second type of reaction is what we call an endergonic reaction. And this is a reaction that needs energy to begin. And so a lot of times what you'll see is these two types of reactions are coupled together. Or what you'll see is they work in tandem. And so what you'll see is an exothermic reaction goes first and the energy released from that reaction will feed into the endergonic reaction. We'll see this play out in the ATP energy production pathways in the next videos. The next type of reactions that we'll see are what we call redox reactions. And redox is short for reduction and oxidation. So a reduction reaction just means there's an addition of an electron. Whereas oxidation is the removing of an electron. Redox reactions are important to be aware of because they play out within the electron transporters during ATP production. And we'll have two types that we'll discuss. The first is NAD plus and FAD plus. Another concept that you'll see within the ATP energy production pathways are this concept of enzymes. And what enzymes are are catalysts that regulate the speed of reactions. And so what we mean by that is they reduce the energy cost for starting a reaction. Let's try to put this into a more of a pictorial concept. When we talk about lowering the energy activation cost, we're kind of talking about this concept of the amount of energy that it takes for a reaction to occur. And so usually when you see this, we have an exothermic reaction feeding into an endogonic reaction, kind of what we talked about earlier. And so what enzymes do is they lower this cost or this activation energy necessary. And this is what we're seeing here in this, in this figure right here. Here on the left 
is what we call a non-catalyzed reaction. And what we're trying to show is this energy barrier here is very high. So it takes a lot more energy for the reaction to occur to get to the products. But if you have the same reaction and you add an enzyme to it to help catalyze the reaction, you lower the activation energy. So it takes less energy for the reaction to occur and then it can occur faster. And so this is what we're talking about, how enzymes regulate the speed of reactions. And they do that through lowering the activation energy cost for the reaction to occur. Throughout this course, you'll come across several different types of enzymes. But one way to be able to recognize the enzyme is, is its name. And typically, enzymes end with the term ASE or ACE. And this is how we know it's an enzyme. So for example, the first one is kinases. And these add phosphate groups to the molecule. Second is called a dehydrogenase, which remove hydrogen atoms. The third is oxidases, which catalyze the redox reactions involving oxygen. And finally, you have what's called isomerases, which cause the rearrangement in the structure of molecules. So if you can understand the following concepts of one, anabolic versus catabolic reactions, Second, exothermic versus endothermic reactions. Third, redox reactions. And finally, the role of enzymes. you'll be in a good spot in understanding how ATP is produced. So in this video, we covered quite a, a few different areas and let's summarize what we discussed. First, we defined metabolism and bioenergetics. Second, we briefly discussed the key, the key structures of a cell and skeletal muscle, particularly the two different types of mitochondria. And lastly, we discussed several different types of chemical reactions. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.